Welcome to episode 147 of the Gluttons for Punishment podcast, or GFP, a Toronto Maple Leafs and NHL podcast hosted by Michael Lapore and Anthony Bruno. He's Lapore. I'm Bruno. Thank you so much for listening and watching us on YouTube as well. The Stanley Cup final has finally arrived. Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers against Matthew Kachuk and the Florida Panthers. I can't wait for this series. We are going to give you our thoughts and opinions on the Stanley Cup final. We are going to give you our bets, our predictions. We are going to break down everything from the matchup to the Conn Smythe trophy. It's going to be a great episode, and I promise you want to stay tuned until the very end. But before we get into all that, it is time to officially welcome in my partner in crime, Mr. Michael Lepore. How you doing today, man? Anthony Bruno, as always, absolutely ecstatic to be here. I got to say, though, I'm uh, looking like a schlub compared to you. You look like you just got out of a Woodbridge uh, barbershop, hair done. Looks like you got a hot shave. And I look like a goof. i am got my uh, hoodie on, unshaven, hair not done, because I'm heading to the rink after. But thanks uh, thanks for showing me up, Bruno. I always appreciate that on the show. Yeah, fresh haircut. I actually got the haircut a couple of days ago. Luca, Shout right? to uh, John Carlo. Oh, John Carlo. My, my barber in the heart of Woodbridge. What? I think his name was Luca. Is that another guy? Well, or... uh, because everyone's name is Luca in Woodbridge. Uh, I know uh, a Luca as well. Okay. So, yeah. Anyway, that's Woodbridge for you. Fresh I'm, sure haircut. Not, I'm sure there's not many barbershops in Woodbridge, right? Uh, there's a barbershop basically every 10 steps you take in Woodbridge. Nice. Pretty nice. pretty typical for the area. So yeah, man, looking good. Laporte, I mean, you don't give yourself enough credit, for God's sakes. Well, I mean, oh, look okay. at you over here, man. Come on. Yeah. All right. Let's get straight into the hockey talk here before people uh, turn off the episode. <laughs> so... Oilers versus uh, Panthers. I just want to shout out myself because I <laughs> predicted the Stanley Cup final back in February. You uh, did. One of my best predictions ever, even though everyone still chirps me for being an Oilers hater. Everyone's in my comments on social media telling me to shut up because I hate the Oilers, this and that. Well, too bad for you because in February, I said it would be Oilers, Panthers in the Cup final. I kind of changed my tune on the Oilers this season after their dreadful 2-9-1 and one start. Now, let's tee this up here, Lepore. So we have two of the best five-on-five five teams in the NHL all season, okay? Mm -hmm. If you look at any of the underlying numbers, if you look at any of the regular stats, advanced stats, these were two of the best teams all season. So I think we have two very deserving participants in the Stanley Cup final. Um, the Oilers head into the series with their special teams operating at a ridiculous rate. They have the number one power play in the playoffs, number one penalty kill in the playoffs. Although the Panthers have the best five on five numbers in the playoffs in terms of expected goals for percentage. We have stars on both sides. It's going to be one hell of a series, man. So as of right now, where are you leaning? How do you break this thing down? Who's winning the Stanley Cup? Okay, um, Bruno, this one to me is is very, very weird because you have two teams that they're very different, right? I think we look at the Florida Panthers and we see a well-balanced lineup. They have some fantastic players. I don't know if they have any superstar players. You might say that about Reinhardt with the season he had, but even that I think is kind of debatable based on his history. And then you go to the other side and you have... Uh, the best player we've seen in a long time, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, who I think everyone would put in like top five players in the league at the lowest. So I am super excited. I'll start by saying that. And I think we are going to get an absolute war. I think it's going to be a clash of two different types of teams. And I get the feeling we're going to see a lot of different types of games. Then we're not going to see six or seven run and gun games. We're not going to see six or seven um, low scoring games. We're not going to get six or seven goalie battles. I really think we're going to see everything in this series. And I think it's going to be awesome. As far as a prediction goes or where I see this is going to, this is going to head. You look at these two teams. Okay. And I think I'm being pretty objective here when I say that, okay, if you could have one of these two coaches, 
which coach would you have? If you Obviously, could have Paul Maurice. If you could have one of these two goalies, which one would you have? Obviously, Sergei Bobrovsky. If you could have one of these two defensive cores, which one would you want? Definitely the Florida Panthers. <laughs> and forward groups, I mean, McDavid and Dreisaitl exist. And I think you could say in totality, the forwards, it's a debate. But in terms of depth, which group would you rather have? Yeah, the Panthers have more depth, but the high-end talent obviously right. is in favor obviously. of the Oilers up front. Right. So my brain, my brain is saying Florida wins this series. And not only do they win it, I see them winning it fairly easily. I'm almost picturing oh, shit. I'm almost picturing similar to what we saw last year. But at the same time, the reason why I think it's going to be an amazing series is just because I think there's something about the Oilers, man. Maybe, maybe it is just the star power that you give them a chance and you think they could actually do this. Um, the home ice, I mean, Edmonton's going to have a better home ice advantage than Florida will. I was actually wondering, anyone comment down below, or Bruno, if you've heard, have they put any rules out in Florida? Because I know in years past, when Tampa was in the Stanley Cup final, they put rules that you couldn't wear away teams' jerseys in the Yeah, first I, bowl. I haven't seen that, because teams, sometimes they do that when they're playing mm -hmm. the Leafs in the playoffs, mm -hmm. because their fans travel so well. I have not seen anything on social media regarding this but who knows okay yeah i'm pretty sure tampa did it every time specifically i remember way back when they played um when they played uh was it the rangers <clears throat> they, they put that rule in but i mean who knows so again regarding the home ice there's gonna be a lot of oilers fans in florida uh the oilers arena is gonna be exploding so like i said my brain 100 percent is in the direction of the florida panthers and i my brain says they're gonna win this series easily but there's something in my heart and there's something in my gut that thinks the Edmonton Oilers do have a fighting chance in this series and better than a fighting chance. They have a legit chance to win this series. But my life savings on the line, if I had to pick a winner, I'm going to go with my brain. I'm going to pick the Florida Panthers in six games. I think you're a pretty smart guy. Uh, no. Because listen, I think people know where I stand if they've been following this podcast all season. Um. Not only did I pick the Stanley Cup final and I keep pumping my own tires back in February, but I've been on this Florida Panthers team from day one. You have. Um, I obviously have money on this team to win the Stanley Cup. So that's where my my money is. Uh, and that's also where my head is as well. I think they're the better team. I think they're going to win the five on five battle. They were one of the best defensive teams in the league all year. They've been great defensively throughout the playoffs. They have better depth than Edmonton. And I think it's their time. They were here last year, and I don't want to put a ton of stock into the experience. You know, they were here last year against Vegas. They got pumped. They've learned from their mistakes. I don't buy into that too much. I look more at the numbers and kind of what I've been watching throughout the playoffs. I just think they are the best team in the NHL. Mm -hmm. And the betting markets support that. If you look at the odds right now, I'm looking at Pinnacle Sportsbook. Like minus the Panthers are minus 141 favorites to win the series. The Oilers are plus 122. They are obviously the underdogs. So, you know, it, it's close. It's not like the, the Panthers are substantial favorites here. But the sports books, you know, view them as basically around like a 55% favorite to win the series, right? Um, and I think that's pretty bang on, honestly. The one thing that scares me here about the Oilers is Connor McDavid, obviously, because he's yeah, the best player slash. in the world. And Leon Dreisaitl, because they are the two best playoff performers that we have seen basically, what, over the last 10 years? Even though they haven't won a cup, I'm talking about pure point production. Like, they have been mutants in the playoffs in yeah. terms of point production. And the Oilers special teams has been incredible. Like, if the Panthers are not able to contain them on the power play... This series could be a lot closer than people think. As I said, the Oilers have the number one power play in the playoffs, the number one penalty kill in the playoffs. The Panthers, their penalty kill has actually been really good as well. They have the number two penalty kill in the playoffs right behind the Oilers. So we'll see what happens because, you know, they can win, they can win games on the power play alone. Of course, yeah. And if they get hot, this thing could go the distance. Now, I will say, you said that the series 
you think is going to end pretty quickly. I would honestly be pretty shocked if this goes less than six games. Like, I think the money bet here, even, even if you want to take like an exact series bet, I love Panthers in six. Um, but I just think, listen, McDavid and Drysaddle, they're here for the first time. You know, you know what vibes I'm getting from this, Lapore? I think about the NFL. I think about the last two Super Bowls. Let's go back two years. Chiefs, Eagles. The Eagles came into the game. They were the better team. They had the better roster from top to bottom. Who did the Chiefs have? Patrick Mahomes, the best player in football, the best quarterback on the planet. And that was the difference. Let's go back to the Super Bowl we just watched. Your San Francisco 49ers, just Thanks, like the on. Eagles, the better team, the better roster, the better defense, right? But who did the Chiefs have? Patrick Mahomes. So that's the great equalizer here, right? Like the Panthers, I think we can all agree, are the better team. But the Oilers have the one guy who can just say, I don't give a shit and win the series on his own. And that's Connor McDavid and not, you know, not to be outdone, Leon Dreisaitl, who's just as much of a beast as Connor McDavid, honestly. So that's the one thing where I'm like, man, do I really want to bet against the best player in the world? Like, think about it. All the greatest players in NHL history, for the most part of all, won a Stanley Cup. Do we really want to bet against one of the greatest players we have ever seen playing in his first Stanley Cup final? It's not like he's a young guy. He's not 22, 23. Like McDavid and Drysaddle are now established veterans. They are, you know, Drysaddle's not at the same level as McDavid, but he's a first ballot Hall of Famer as well, right? So it's like, do we really want to bet against these guys when really the best player on the other team, you got Barkov, you got Kachuk, you got Reinhardt, you got Bob. But they're not on the same level, obviously, as these two mutants, right? So that's the one thing that's kind of making me hesitate a little bit and making me second guess my opinions here. But with all that being said, fuck it. I'm on the Florida Panthers. It's time for a quick break for a word from Manscaped. Fellas, I can guarantee that you haven't bought your father a gift yet for Father's Day. Shame on you. I mean, I haven't even bought a gift yet, so I guess shame on me as well. But that is why Manscaped is here. The leaders in Below the Waist Grooming are here to help us out. Maybe your dad has had a bush since the 70s, and that's okay, Ooh. because our friends at Manscaped have crafted the total package for his special day. Whether it's for the boys downstairs, his beard, or even a pair of underwear, Manscaped has all the bases covered. So head over to Manscaped and get 20% off and free shipping using our exclusive code GFP20. Lapore, have you gotten a Father's Day gift yet? No, nothing for uh, nothing for uh, Franco yet. I still have to work on it. But uh, gentlemen, if you are a loyal listener of this podcast, you've heard Bruno and I go off about how amazing Manscaped products are. So we know you are well taken care of. But why not pass on the love to your dad on Father's Day with some Manscaped products, manscaped.com, throw it all in the cart, GFP20 for 20% off and free shipping. Fellas, your father is gonna get a lot of gifts on Father's Day that he probably doesn't care about, but if he gets something from Manscaped, oh baby, is he gonna be happy because these products are just incredible, as Lapore mentioned. So listen, go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping using our exclusive code gfp20 that is code gfp20 for 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com and your father is going to be very very happy it's time for an important message from better help a sponsor of today's episode sometimes in life we go through difficult times whether that's personally whether that's in a relationship and your mental health cannot be ignored and a lot of times you can't tackle these situations by yourself. You need help. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. They make therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people. BetterHelp lets you have therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even messaging. Whatever is most comfortable for you. BetterHelp will connect you with one of 30,000 therapists in their network. And in most cases, you'll be connected with a therapist within 48 hours. So go to betterhelp.com slash GFP for 10% off your first month of therapy. Lapore, this service is incredible. It is incredible. Anthony Bruno, 
Uh, mental health is something that's very serious. And be aware, if you're going through a dark time, you do not have to try to beat this thing alone. There are services out there that can provide you with some great help. BetterHelp is number one when it comes to that. As Bruno mentioned, there are different ways you can get in touch with people, different ways you can contact people. It's all up to you. Go to betterhelp.com slash GFP. Join 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to live healthier and happier lives. So go to betterhelp.com slash GFP for 10% off your first month of therapy to connect with a therapist and see if BetterHelp is right for you. To be clear, Bruno, before everyone starts throwing shit at me, it's my brain that says Florida is going to win this series rather quickly, but my heart is pushing it the other way. So I think Florida is still going to win, but I think it's, I don't think it's going to be easy. What actually, I think I would be a straight 50 50 on the series. Like, I went over all those things Knobloch versus Maurice, Bob versus Skinner, the D versus the D, the forward depth versus the forward depth. And here, I, I feel the way you do about McDavid being able to win this series on his own and Dreisaitl being able to win this series on his own. So, I think I would be a straight coin flip if there wasn't this factor. One more question, Bruno Which team has bigger assholes? As bigger assholes. Oh, yes. absolutely. The Florida Panthers. The Florida Panthers. And I think there's going to be no holds bar when it comes to McDavid. There's going to be cheap shots. They're going to do everything they can. And it's going to be, as neutral hockey fans, it's going to be super interesting to watch um, how this series is officiated. Because, you know, the Oilers, like you mentioned, Bruno, it's, it's almost as if their penalty kill is not getting the attention it deserves because their power play has been so good. And both are absolutely unbelievable. So going into a Stanley Cup final, you would typically say, you know what? They're probably going to put the whistles away, let them play it out. But Florida is going to play a certain style and they're going to be dancing with the line. And there's also the element of, are they going to want to, are they going to want these games to be decided on special teams? So I'll be playing, paying close attention to that. But like I said, I, I think it is going to be a great series, man. Like I said, two, two different types of teams, Teams that can win different ways. We may see history. And I had that discussion with someone about star players winning the Stanley Cup. And you go all the way back. I mean, Gordie Howe, Bobby Orr, Guy Lafleur, Bobby Clark, Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, going into Crosby and Ovechkin. And all. it seems like the best players win the Stanley Cup. And I always make the point that if you look at the list, those lists, oh, the best players to have never won. The list isn't that good, if we're being perfectly honest, because you're going to get guys who are really good and never won. I mean, it's just sports. But I wonder, I wonder if we sort of look at that with tinted glasses because there wasn't a cap before. That's and, a really good point that not a lot of people bring up. Yeah. So it's like Gretzky for like, what would Gretzky have been making in relation to the league? And if, if it was in today's economics and there was no cap, right. And even back then the Oilers, I mean, there's not public stuff. I mean, you, you can find stuff on the, uh, on the payrolls, but there's nothing hard cemented publicly about what these guys were making, but you just look at the lineups and they were super teams. And it like, and the two of them are frankly specifically are um, Gretzky's Oilers and Lemieux's Penguins. Just, I mean, star-studded lineups. I actually think the Pittsburgh team that won back-to-back -back Cups is kind of historically underrated. Like, when you see those lists of the best teams to win the Cup, like, best teams ever, that team was stacked, man. Like, Lemieux, uh, Yager, Stevens, Francis, Tockett. They had Samuelson. Yeah, that's a ridiculous Paul roster. Paul Coffey. Tom Barrasso won a Vezina trophy. I mean, that, that, that was a really good team. But then moving forward, I mean, okay, you have you have Sid, he won in a cap world. You had Ovechkin, he won in a cap world. But I wonder if it's not going to be as much of a slam dunk in this era with with the cap existing and teams not being able to give whatever they want to players. But I I have no issue. You're hearing a lot of neutrals. <laughs> I'm, I'll ask you, Anthony, are you? I know you're cheering for Florida because of your ego. And we've touched on that a few times and there's no humble bragging uh, going on with Bruno Stanley Cup prediction. It's just pure gloat bragging. The, the whole cheering for McDavid to win the legacy thing. Had you not been pumping the Florida Panthers since the preseason is our you'd be at. 
Uh, I don't know. I, I'm kind of, that's what I've been kind of wrestling with. Another aspect to this Lepore is that I'm a big Leaf fan and I don't really want to see any other Canadian team win because that's maybe that's a separate conversation. I don't give a shit about any other Canadian teams winning the Stanley Cup. Maybe I'm in the minority here, but no, I don't want to see the Habs win the Cup. I don't want to see the Canucks win the Cup, the Jets win the Cup. I don't want to see the Oilers win the Cup either, selfishly as a Leaf fan. Um, now, listen, I can appreciate great hockey, and I've acknowledged several times that Connor McDavid is the best player in the world. I mean, we've been saying it on this show forever. The only time that we said that Matthews really was the best player was the year that he won the Hart Trophy. And even the year he won the Hart Trophy, Lepore, we still acknowledge that you could win the Hart Trophy but not be the best player in the world. He just happened to have the best season. Mm -hmm. So, anyway... I would like to see McDavid win a cup because I think it would be an absolute shame if, you know, arguably the greatest player we've ever seen, just from like a pure skill perspective, it would be a shame if that player didn't win a cup. So I, I would like to see him win, but I think my ego is getting in, in the way to a certain extent because I've been riding the Panthers all year because I have money on them because I think they're the better team. When I look at the numbers, when I watch them play, go down the list. Um, but I, I, you know, despite all that, Lepore, I think I would like to see McDavid win a cup, whether it's this year or some point down the road. It would be a shame if a guy like that ended his career without a cup. Yeah, it would, it would be, it would be insane. I mean, that would go down as not only like hands down the best hockey player to never win, but you're even getting into best athletes. Oh, absolutely. To, to, to never win a championship, a guy with this many scoring titles, this many MVP awards. It's going to be fun, man. There's going to be a lot of takes. There's going to be a lot of narratives. I'll, I'll, let's do Let's play this game, Bruno. What if you're, let's do each team. Okay. If you're the Edmonton Oilers and you're going into this series, what makes you the most nervous about this series? Like, what do you think is going to be the Achilles heel for the Edmonton Oilers? I think what makes them the most nervous is that the Panthers are just, a deeper team and they're going to win the five on five battle in my opinion. Um, and I think the Oilers probably know that they need to execute on, on special teams on both the power play and the penalty kill. And if they don't, they could be in trouble and we'll get into the con Smythe conversation down the road. But I think Alexander Barkov is going to have a big role in this series because he has been a beast the entire playoffs. He has, neutralized a lot of the other team's best players throughout the playoffs so far. And he's probably going to see a hell of a lot of Connor McDavid. And, you know, Barkov is not the only defensively sound player on this Panthers team. They're, they're a great defensive team across the board. So I think, you know, if, if Barkov and the rest of the, the guys on that Panthers team are able to neutralize McDavid. Cause listen, you're not going to slow. You're not going to stop McDavid and dry But I think the fear here for the Oilers is that if McDavid and dry you know, don't produce a ton offensively, they're in yeah, trouble, they're man. Yeah. They're done. They're in yeah. big trouble. Even the biggest Oilers fan in the world would say that. Yeah. And, and maybe it's, it seems obvious, but even just, you know, go look at the, at the scoring leaderboard right now in the playoffs. Like, listen, okay, I know Hyman and Nugent Hopkins and Evan Bouchard are having good playoffs as well, but there's not a ton of, of secondary scoring on that team. If you shut down those two guys, you basically shut down the entire operation. And again, no one's going to shut them down, but if, if McDavid finishes this series with, I don't know, six points in, in six games or yeah, seven points in six games, they're probably not winning the Stanley Cup. No. That's a, that's a fun game too. What's the over under for McDavid? Where you, if someone showed you what amount of points would you be like? Okay, the Oilers are gonna win. I think maybe probably over like ten points, like ten and a half points. I'd set the line at. Yeah, I was gonna can, say like I was gonna say like twelve. Really? Eh. Yeah, I mean, considering how many goes it comes out, how many games it goes. Yeah. But for, for me, for me, if I'm Edmonton and we'll get to Florida, what makes me nervous is you touched on how good Florida is five on five and how every line can score. And like I said, this team is a bunch of assholes. I look at Edmonton's D and I look at Skinner and I think, and Skinner is going to have to steal games. So I'll, I'll say that right now. Skinner is, is going to have to be a plus, And that makes me nervous 
that makes me really and truly nervous because again, I make the point, Bob can do that. We won't be surprised if Bobro- if Bobrovsky plays out of his mind, if Skinner plays out of his mind. I mean, good for him and he's got those capabilities, but it would be a little shocking. But I just look at the combination of the depth of the Florida Panthers versus the defensive core and the goaltending of the Oilers. And if I'm Edmonton, that's what scares the shit out of me. And with that, I think you're right, Bruno. I think Edmonton knows that. And they are in that meeting room saying, we have to go 10 out of 10 on the power play and the penalty kill. We have to be all the way. We have to dominate that area of the game. Because if that area is even close... Or if Edmonton gets a little slow in that department, I don't think they have much of a chance. I don't think they have much of a chance. So that's what I'd say it is for Edmonton. What about Florida? I mean, is it obvious? Like, what makes you nervous if you're the Florida Panthers? Yeah, I think Florida, like, they're going to get into trouble if some of these games turn into run and gun style games. But you, you alluded to this. Like, I think, I think both teams can play different styles here. Like, I think we're going to see some high scoring games. We're going to see some low scoring games. I think we're we're going to see a good mix because I think both of these teams are capable of, you know, playing a 2-1 game or getting into like a 5-4 overtime game. I just think Florida if if more of these games are ending 4-3, 5-4, that's when it's going to start getting a little dicey for them because they want to play nasty, they want to get in McDavid's face, they probably want to win some lower scoring games here. I think they're more comfortable playing those type of games and that's probably their game plan coming in. They don't want to, this to get away from them. And I'm not saying that Florida doesn't have like the offensive firepower. If they have to come back in a game, if they have to put up a five spot in a game, but if we see some higher scoring games, that's probably a pretty good indication that the Oilers are having their way with this team and are, are figuring out how to break through this team defensively. And then I think the Panthers are in trouble. Okay, so as you were talking about the Panthers running into 4-3 games, 5-4 games, I immediately thought it's incredibly unlikely that Bob is going to get beat for that many goals. That's like the first thing that popped in my head. So I pulled up the Panthers' schedule, okay? So most recent game, they allowed one goal. The one before that, two goals. The one before that, two goals. And they lost that one to the Rangers, 5-4. Then they allowed two goals, 0 one one two two one 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 yeah like amazing like like i I can keep going all the way across the board they they lost one of the lightning six three but other games allowing two allowing two they're not they're not letting in goals and i i didn't that actually that actually puts me more in the direction of the florida panthers like after seeing that every game they're a lot they're only allowing one or two goals so it's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah, I think there was a more of those games. Like the the Oilers are not going to win the majority of these like two one three two games. In my opinion, at least, I, I just don't see that happening. If if more of these games are lower scoring, the Panthers are going to win this series. Yeah, that last game against Dallas. Well, what were the shots? Like thirty five oh, to ten. God. Yeah, or they something. got out shot by like twenty five. Yeah, I think they put up ten shots. Thirty five yeah. ten. And that was a very un Oilers win. And even watching that game, that's when I look at it. You know what? It's actually similar to the way Florida was last year because they were outplayed in a lot of games and they were finding a way to win. And it doesn't, no one asks how. If you win, you win and you advance. But I'm watching that game. And what's going through my head is they're not going to, pl- they're not going to get outplayed like this five on five versus Florida and win. You're not going to be beating Florida 2 nothing on a game where you're out shot by 25 shots. And that, that's not the norm. That's not typical. I'm just saying, like, another reason to, like, like look at the Florida Panthers. But it's funny because I, I think it's that element you brought up, like the Patrick Mahomes thing, where here we are. If someone cut out our actual takes and just listen, our takes as in our um, our predictions, but just listen to the points we're making, they would think both of us are in the boat of Florida's going to blow them out. But there is that thing about having the best player on the ice. And another interesting thing to see is how many minutes McDavid plays. I mean, there's going to be, it's going to be balls to the wall. Now there's nothing holding holding him back. So that's a good not- point too, because you know, you don't get these opportunities very often. I think McDavid's in his ninth season mm-hmm. right now. This is his first appearance in the Stanley cup final. 
Um, so you don't think this guy's going to play probably the most minutes he's ever played in a playoff series. I mean, yeah. he's going to do everything in his power to bring this cup home to Edmonton. Same with dry They're probably both going to lead the series in ice time, at least among forwards, I would right. think. No doubt um, about it. Because they're, you know, that's their, their one big advantage here is those two guys that they're just going to play the shit out of them. Yeah. Anyone... You said it, or go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, see, Florida's deep. So I don't think you can really ask this question about the Panthers, but who's like a lower lineup guy on the Oilers who you think can be a difference maker in this series, push them over the edge. Man, I, I don't think there's anyone. And maybe that sounds a little <laughs> bit ridiculous, but I, I'm I'm pretty se- like serious, man. Like I don't want to hear people saying like Connor Brown or I don't know. Has Zach name. Hyman is Hyman just too good to be playing? Yeah, that Hyman's too now? good. Like I don't view Hyman and Nuge um in that light, even even Evander Kane, even though like he struggled this season. Mm-hmm. There's really no one down that depth chart on Edmonton because throughout the whole playoffs, none of their depth guys have really done anything. They haven't done anything. And, you know, it's not to say that Florida's depth guys are like lighting the world on fire, but like I can see, for example, like Anton Lundell, like making more of a difference than, you know, a bottom six forward on the, on the Edmonton Oilers. So it, it really comes down to those, to those star players. And you know what? Like it is what it is. Like when your star players are are playing that well, you can win a lot of, a lot of playoff games. Like look at the Leafs, their star players, you know, don't elevate in the playoffs and they're out in the first round every year. So, you know, we have seen a trend these last few years where, you know, teams that are built with solid depth that don't have like a top heavy um, lineup and don't have like a ton of money allocated to their top guys. Those are the teams that have typically been winning the Stanley Cup or at least getting to the Stanley Cup final. But it doesn't mean that you can't win the Stanley Cup being built like the Edmonton Oilers. Like, I think it's possible. The one thing, Lapore, their cap is going to be fucked like very soon here. They got to pay dry sidle. They got to pay Evan Bouchard. Bouchard. They got to pay the one no one's David talking about. his extension. Like this could be like the last golden opportunity for this version of the Oilers to win the Stanley cup. Yeah. Well, I mean, we combine now McDavid and dry are making what 20.5 million. You got to think that's got to be, over 30 just no not just the two of them 30 million you think well think about it right matthews is making 13 and a quarter right a so let's say dry cycle gets deal. i don't know let's say dry cycle even if he if he takes 13 and a half or 14 and then you got mcdave who's the best player in the world i mean holy shit i i don't know if he's gonna pull a tom brady and say i'll take less let's build a great team here but I would imagine he's going to want to be the highest paid player in the league. Okay, maybe if it's not 30, it's, 20 it's in the easy. high 20s. Yeah, easy. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough one. But it's funny, Bruno. I'm going to put you on the spot because <laughs> you're here you are loving the Florida Panthers, and we just talked about this team comparison. But I know you've said many times that you never believed in the Carolina Hurricanes because they lack the high-end star talent. So what do you see as far as the difference goes between the Panthers and the Hurricanes? Well, first of all, I think that Barkov and Matthew Kachuk are just better players than like any of the top guys the Hurricanes have. Like I would take Um, Barkov and Matthew Kachuk over Sebastian Ajo. Okay, that's a debate. That's a debate. Like man, Barkov's a beast. Like some of the, the stuff he was pulling off in that Rangers series, like he's just an incredible player. Matthew Kachuk, he's a gamer. You know, he's racking up points. He's kind of had like a quiet playoffs, but he's been their leading scorer mm-hmm. throughout the playoffs. Um, I just think, you know, even Carter for Hagee, like this is a dude who can put the puck in the net. You know, he's a point per game player. He has scored 40 goals in the National Hockey League. Like, I think they have enough offense to get this done. And, you know, defensively, this team has been awesome all season. So I, I just think that they have a little bit more offensive talent. And then you have Ryan Hart who scored over 50 goals this year. I think they, they're a better offensive team than the Carolina hurricanes are. I think they have more game breakers than the hurricanes. Okay. All right. That's fair. I mean, like I love Sebastian Ajo. I think he's unbelievable. Um, But I I see your point of, yeah, as much as they don't have that superstar hall of fame slam dunk talent, maybe the Panthers is a little better 
Um, should we get to the con Smythe? Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Let's, before we wrap things up, let's get into the con Smythe conversation. I will take you through the betting odds right now, because I think, um, you know, we all understand that Connor McDavid is, is the runaway favorite to win the con Smythe. Maybe that might sound surprising to you considering like we're both on the Panthers, but when you look at the betting markets, McDavid is the favorite to win the con Smythe trophy. So Next up is Barkov. So, okay, like I'm looking at Pinnacle. McDavid is plus 195 to win the Conn Smythe. Barkov is second at plus 370. Bobrovsky is next at plus 462. Then you have Matthew Kachuk plus 464. And then it goes down to Leon Dreisaitl at plus 1148. And Evan Bouchard at plus 1187 so i would imagine the con smythe winner is going to come from this group of six you have three oilers three guys on the panthers uh lapore who do you think is going to win the con smythe you said mcdavid is plus 195 plus 195 so shade under two to one to win the con smythe and but the oilers are what like plus 120 or plus 130 to win the series yeah the oilers right now plus 122 yeah, I think you're a I think you're a dummy then if you bet the Oilers, take that money and bet it on McDavid winning the Conn Smythe. Yeah. I, I think that that'd that be my play. And what'd you say Bobrovsky is? Uh he is a little under five to one to win the Conn Smythe. That's my bet. Okay. That's that's my bet, both in opinion as well as that's where that's where I would throw my money at five to one. The one thing I'll say about McDavid, I wonder, I guess it depends how he goes off in this series. Could we have a situation where he wins it as a loser? I think it's possible, but I just can't see a world where he goes off and, and the Oilers win. lose this series. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Right? Like, I mean, it's possible. It's Connor McDavid, but I mean, if this dude's putting up like 13, 14 points and, you know, in six, in six games and they lose the series, I'd be shocked. Yeah. Like, I think fair. we're looking mm-hmm. at a, if the Panthers win the cup here, they probably win it in six games or less. And McDavid is held to like a point a game or a little under a point a game, which means that he's probably not going to win the con Smythe. Like he would have to go great. He'd have to put up two points a game and this thing would have to go like seven games in yeah. a losing effort to win the con Smythe. I'm just looking, I'm just looking here. Bobrovsky. Um, looking, trying to look at find his playoff stats. Yeah. So... Like his, his save percentage hasn't been great. Mm. Although like his like goal saved above expected has been pretty solid. Like he's, he's had a, a good playoffs. I wouldn't say he's had like an outstanding playoffs, but I mean, if he stands on his head in this series, as we have seen several times in the past, just like when he dominated the Leafs, then he could easily win the con Smythe. Do I have to say it, Bruno? Are you seeing the, uh, the save percentage leader for the playoffs right now? Yeah, go tell us who it is. Our boy, Joseph wall. <laughs> 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 Nine six four Joseph Wall. Yeah, yeah it's uh, yeah. I mean, hmm. that hurts. Joseph yeah. Wall. Where are you going, Bruno? Um, who's winning the cup? Where are you? Where are you putting your? Where would you put your money? And who do you think's gonna get it? So I've already put my money on someone in particular to win the Con Smythe, and I've already talked about him. It's Alexander Man. Barkov, because this award, as we know, is also very narrative driven. Okay, so you have to think about it as well from like a storyline perspective. And I know it's not the best way to think about it because, you know, this really should be based on the numbers and what we're watching, but it's narrative driven. And there's already a lot of steam that is picked up behind Barkov and his ability to shut down the other team's best players throughout the playoffs. When you look at the top guys on the Rangers and how they did nothing in the conference final, like Zabanajad was a ghost, Kreider was a ghost. Uh, Panarin didn't do a hell of a lot. Um, you go back even to the first round against Tampa. Like he did a really nice job against Kucherov and point, um, you know, Boston, I mean, Boston, they, they, they sucked offensively. So I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to say he did like a phenomenal job shutting those guys down, but he did because the Bruins didn't do much either. So if he is now able to, to shut down McDavid to a degree, and put up close to a point per game in the cup final. I think Barkov is the guy who's going to win this trophy because Bobrovsky, I don't think his numbers have been quite good enough to win the Smythe. But again, he could 
go crazy in this series and win the con Smythe. That's definitely a possibility. Kachuk, I think, is is another guy who has a good chance to win this. If he, you know, scores five goals, puts up 10 points, leads the team in scoring, like he could easily win it. But I think when you look at the two-way play, I think that the narrative is going to continue to build. If McDavid struggles at the start of this series and he can't generate a ton offensively, who do you think is going to get the most of the credit for that? It's going to be Barkov. So oh, I think when you think about the offensive production he's capable of, he already sits at a point per game right now in the playoffs. You think about what he's done against the other team's best players throughout the whole postseason. If he can do something similar against McDavid here, I think he's going to be in a great spot to win the con Smythe. So that's why I put my money on Barkov. You almost convinced me, Bruno. Like I went for I went Bobrovsky simply because okay, the Panthers don't have a McDavid or a dry sidle. So like, okay, hey, go with the goalie and they're a balanced team. I'll do it that way. And I remember last year I put a bet on Bobrovsky to win the con Smythe going into the finals because I thought he could win it as a loser. I thought you were getting good value with that. Tough though, man. The Barkov thing. I think I like it, Bruno. You 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 got these things well thought out. You're excited for this series. You spent your I'm maybe because your money's man. on the line. <laughs> I'm excited, man. I'm on the Panthers. I'm on Barkov. I, I might, you know what? I might even sprinkle on like Kachuk and Bobrovsky because really, like any of those guys could win the con Smythe, depending on how this series goes. I just think when you pair offensive production, two-way play, and and narrative, I think Barkov is a little bit ahead of the pack here in yeah. terms of everyone else on the Panthers. Um, and, but obviously, if the Oilers win the series, like McDavid is an absolute slam dunk to win the con Smythe. Yeah, I honestly can't. I honestly can't believe that. Like I remember seeing in the Super Bowl, essentially Mahomes to win the MVP and the Chiefs to win was like the same bet because I yeah. mean, what 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 was going to happen that he wouldn't wouldn't win? Um, but as far as it goes with. Like the cons might again, again, like th think of this series and how we've touched on how excited we are for this series. Has there ever been this much discussion? Like here we have the Florida Panthers, the Florida Panthers who are favored. And there's a full on debate, full on debate. You could list three, four guys on the Panthers. who go win the cons might. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then you have a historically great player on the other side who might just go alien and do it himself. And you brought up the Mahomes thing um, previously, but how, you know, he beat the Eagles, who are the better team, and the 49ers, sadly, who are the better team. NBA Finals, man, Draymond Green. They Remember they gave it to him? No, it wasn't Draymond. It was Iguodala. Yeah, Iguodala. The year yeah. that LeBron put up, like, 35, like, <laughs> yeah. 10 and 8, and, and didn't win Finals MVP. Or, well, or sorry, I mean, the Warriors won the series, but they LeBron basically said off. Iguodala shut down LeBron in the finals, and he basically averaged a triple double. Just yeah, outrageous. I've, I've seen things that have like biggest sports robberies of all time, and LeBron. People think like LeBron should have fucking won the MVP, even even as a loser in yeah. that series. And the guy who apparently stopped him didn't really do a very good job of stopping him. But that's uh, yeah, that's, it's crazy. That's sports no, but you. this is going to be a hell of a series, man, because you know it's not like one of those years where, you know, you get like a seven or an eight seed who makes a run like the Panthers last year. Like these have been two of the top five teams basically all season outside of that horrible stretch. The Oilers had at the start of the year, where they went two, nine and one, you know, McDavid against this Panthers team. It's going to be awesome, man. Is it, is there anything else you want to get off your chest before we wrap up this podcast? No, I just, uh, we've said it over and over again in the last, uh, what is it, 45 minutes about how excited we are for this series as hockey fans. We can't wait. And all Stanley Cup final, Stanley Cup finals are a big deal. And, you know, we talk about them and we we, we don't forget certain aspects. I really think this is going to be one to remember. I really do. And if it's a sad thing, because there will be, even if you see like how, you know, we're both picking the Panthers. Um but there will be the sad thing for me. Like, I'll feel bad for McDavid. I really will. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, like how, almost how can you not? I think any objective hockey fan would be like, yeah, this guy fucking deserves one and this sucks. And then the whole thing will come into, oh, can he win one? You touched on how their cap's going to change. And now you question how competitive they can be. But I will be watching every second of this series with like tingles because I, I just think as a hockey fan, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's been cup finals in the past, I guess, from two Canadian hockey fans talking that just haven't been that intriguing. 
you know, even last year, it's like Panthers, Golden Knights. It's like, okay, if you're a diehard hockey fan, sure, it's great. But you add McDavid into the mix here, it just it just awesome. turns this up a notch, you know? Like, everyone wants to see this. McDavid against the Florida Panthers in his first cup final. It, it's going to be awesome. But yeah. I can't wait. Uh, we're both on the Panthers. Would not be surprised if McDavid, you know, pulls one uh, – pulls one out of his ass here and just dominates the series and brings it home for Edmonton. But I'll be siding with Florida. Lapore is with Florida. Let us know in the comments down below uh, who you think is going to win the Stanley cup and the con Smythe, but that is going to do it for episode 147 of the Gluttons for punishment podcast. Um, a Toronto Maple Leafs and NHL podcast hosted <laughs> by Michael Lapore. <laughs> And Anthony Bruno. Uh, kind of funny you're... to call it a Toronto Maple Leafs podcast. <laughs> and we right didn't now. talk about the Leafs once. It's, it... This oh, might God. be the first episode ever we haven't talked about the Leafs. But I promise we will because there's going to be some fireworks. You can just kind of feel something coming down the pipeline. But yeah, uh, I, feel, I feel more relaxed. We mustn't have talked about the Leafs. I just feel good and calm. And yeah, happy. it's good to just not talk about that shitty team for once. You know, we've done 146 other episodes talking about them. But uh Listen, if you're if you're a first time listener or a long time listener and you really enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a five star rating and review on either Apple or Spotify. And if you're watching us on YouTube and you really enjoyed the show, smash the like button, um, you know, subscribe to the channel, obviously, and leave a comment down below. As I said, give us your cup pick, your con Smythe pick, and then ring the notification bell while you're at it. Um, so, you know, exactly when the GFP podcast is posting some new content. So for Michael Lapore, I'm Anthony Bruno. Enjoy the Stanley Cup final, and we will chat very, very soon. Thanks, everyone. Oh,